the sun rises at the Komodo National Park. The color of the sunrise serves as a reminder of this land's volcanic origins. Origins dating back millions of years. This is a land of endless shades of blue and green, rich in biodiversity. Many know its name thanks to its eponymous dragon. Located in Indonesia, the National Park was established in 1980 and is comprised of several islands. It was declared a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1991 and selected as one of the new Seven Wonders of the World. The Komodo Archipelago is uniquely positioned in the sea. It acts as a meeting point of two of the planet's largest bodies of water. The Indian Ocean brings in cold currents from the south, while warm Pacific waters come in from the north. The convergence of these two colossal bodies of water creates strong currents, which fish love. These passages in Komodo National Park have for millions of years been vital gateways for the continuous exchange of marine flora and fauna. The rich planktonic feast carried by the water forms the foundation of one of the richest marine ecosystems on the planet. The consequence of all this is a bustling underwater metropolis full of color, activity, and life. A kaleidoscope of color and movement paints the reef. Red coral paints the ocean floor, and algae paints the shell of a hawk's bill turtle. Unlike its cleaner relative, the green turtle, the hawk's bill keeps the algae on as camouflage. In typical relaxed turtle fashion, this female almost bumped into us as the current took her along during our dive in Batu Bolong. This is a broad club cuttlefish. At first glance, it may look docile, but looks can be deceiving. As the second largest species of cuttlefish in the world, it needs to be especially good at blending in with its surroundings. He extends his feeding tentacles, an indication of an incoming strike. Or that would have been the case, if not for a little indigestion. In the heart of the Komodo National Park, these manta rays have arrived at the aptly named Manta Alley for their regular morning routine. This is their cleaning station. 
the rays do the marine equivalent of a morning bath. Large, slow, and majestic in their movement, the rays indicate their arrival by entering a stationary position and exposing themselves to the nearby fish. Gill scrubs, tail reflexology, wing therapies, and cephalic lobe facials, all must be provided. However, this isn't just a free spa for the manta rays. This is also where they come to socialize and build relationships with their own kind. As wrasses feast on the parasites, dead skin, and debris they remove from the ray's body, it may come with the odd tickle, a small sacrifice for a good scrub. The sheer size of the manta ray can help shelter the fish with their wings, hiding them from predators. This undoubtedly is a win-win situation and highlights the intricate webs of interdependence that sustain our ocean's organisms. With their graceful and elegant movement, a white-tip shark is an uncommon sight these days. As it glides through the reef, its white-tipped fin helps to identify it. Sharks are essential predators for balancing the marine ecosystem, but their population has plummeted. This makes the sighting of a couple of juveniles a heartwarming relief. Here these playful siblings circle this crevice as they prepare to go out for a morning hunt. These pups are nearly a meter in length, around half the size they will reach in adulthood. That is, however, not a guarantee, as they are often hunted for their fins. The many passages between islands in Komodo are particularly rich in life. Plankton and other marine nutrients are forced across these paths. This eel garden is located right in the middle of the action. This densely populated garden is the result of a particularly strong current at the world-famous shotgun dive site. As the sun sets, the world above the waves winds down. However, under the waves, new opportunities emerge and different creatures appear ready to take advantage. As light intensity drops, Plankton rises from the ocean floor. This causes the reef to become more active with nocturnal life. The longhorn cowfish is a quirky marine marvel. Sporting a boxy body and elongated horn-like projections, they resemble underwater cattle. Their horns have grown longer over thousands of years to prevent predators from swallowing them. And, like their terrestrial counterpart, also move leisurely. Its languid pace doesn't hinder its survival, thanks to a potent toxin it secretes from its skin. Unlike garden eels, this ribbon eel prefers to live alone. This adult male 
has a vibrant blue body and yellow mouth. It's an ambush predator and uses its wing-like nostrils as antennae, letting it sense its environment for predators or prey. The nostrils also act like lures for would-be prey, and it plays a waiting game, with its head popped out and mouth wide open. This white-spotted hermit crab has found itself a nice triton trumpet shell, but it's having trouble navigating this turbid water. While it may seem cloudy with sand and debris, upon closer inspection, it's evident that the particles are alive. The water is full of plankton, which really is no more than a dense soup of yummy worms, arthropods, and small fish for the hermit and its smaller relatives. Indonesia is blessed to be one of the most naturally beautiful and diverse regions on the planet, both on land and under the sea. The creation of the Komodo National Park is a much needed step in the right direction. However, the conservation efforts required are monumental. Fish populations around the world are in sharp decline, and the deterioration of corals has been clearly visible over the last decade. Sharks have become a rare sight, and manta rays are increasingly less common. We need to protect a much larger portion of coastal areas on the planet to ensure that the marine environment will be able to sustain itself. Our hope is that the beauty we enjoy now can continue to be experienced for generations to come.